Good day everyone. Our topic for today is all about the measurement with graduated scales and transfer instruments. Under this lesson, I will be going to discuss steel rule as a measuring tool, the role of error, and the steel rule in linear measurement. A steel rule is the most basic and widely used measuring tool. The standard length of a flat steel rule is 6 or 12 inches. However, greater lengths are available. Steel rules might be thin or thick, bendable or rigid. The thinner the rule is, the more accurately it measures. Steel rules are all narrow steel strips with one or more sets of graduated points, although there are several differences. These markers are used to make a scale. When we say scale, it is a simple kind of ruler that is used in geometry to measure length. For engineers and architects, it is a device to measure linear distance and create a proportional linear measurements. Example, engineer scale graduation represent decimal of feet. However, architect scale read in feet and inches and steel rule read directly in units of length. In addition, steel rules are available in a variety of sizes ranging from fraction of an inch to several feet, although the most typical size appears to fit in your pocket. The discrimination of a rule is defined as the number of subdivisions of a length, and the discrimination of a rules is as varied as rules themselves. Also, discrimination is the finest of a scale division of an instrument. It is the smallest division of a scale that can be read reliably. In this figure is the example. There are different types of steel rule. We have rigid rule, flexible rule, narrow rule, hook rule, and we also have the narrow hook rule, rule set, and tapered end rule. When we say rigid rule, it is not bendable. Next, we have flexible rule. This is the opposite of rigid rule. It is used to measure armhole curves. We also have narrow rule. It is smaller than flexible rule, where it is about 6 millimeters. The fourth one is hook rule. It measures edges and gives exact references point. And lastly, we have tapered and true. This ruler, which is only six long and has a tapered end, it fits into compact spaces and it's flexible enough to be used in gently curved surfaces. In line with this, we need to consider these three things. First, which rule type is best for the job? Example, if we are to measure curve rounded or to curve upward in the middle, we should use the flexible rule. Why? Because if we measure them with a straight ruler or even a tape measure, it can give less accurate measurements. Second, to consider if which measurement division or scale should be used. It could be decimal inches, fractional inches, or example, the discrimination 1 over 16, where it is a type of fractional inches. Lastly, we need to consider if which way of keeping both the rule and the part helps us to get the most accurate measurement. To answer this question, we need to follow the first and the second step. And now let us proceed to the role of error. In this figure shown above, the discrimination and precision. 
Previously, I have already discussed what is the meaning of discrimination. The first column is not using an instrument of the proper discrimination, while the second column is using the proper discrimination. The only excuse for not using an instrument of the proper discrimination is not having one. Unfortunately, this happens often and carefully considered compromises must be made. There are many different types of observational or visual errors. One that must be reconsidered apart from other visual errors is the parallax error. As what we can see in the figure above, it is minimized by having the line of measurement of the rule as close as possible to the feature being measured. We need to remember that the right way to use a rule is usually the easiest, the fastest, and most reliable in measuring. So now, for the continuation of our report under measurement with graduated scale and transfer instrument, we have here now Mr. Riddell and Stenzo. So in scaled instrument, we have deep gauges and it have two types called the rod type and the blade type. So here are the illustration of scaled instrument deep gauges and it's two types, the blade type and the rod type. Note that refresh and measured points are reversed. So the dip gauge is frequently used to check the progress when machining holes and recesses. So when close to the finished size, a more precise instrument is substituted. So here is the illustration of a combination square. First one is eyebullet, means very poor reliability. Second one is the use reference block means poor reliability and the last one is the combination use of square but it has satisfactory reliability so in the other part we have combination sets so the steel roll and square head are called a combination square adding the center head and protractor head changes the name to combination set so for the third scaled instrument we have here on your screen squareness and height measurement so in using this instrument we need to check squareness and its measure height and also we need to measure in accessible point with right angle attachment in combining squareness and length measurement in one instrument may combine errors or eliminate errors so it's up to the skill of the measurer so what you've seen here in the screen is that the protector head with sliding blade forms a versatile instrument for the measurement of angles so we also have in the scaled instrument the diameter measurement which focus more on hold one point at the reference point. So the first one is the swing roll for maximum reading that will be measured point. So the second one is the ends or ground for locating diameters and large parts. So the last one is the slide blade so that inch graduation coincides with reference point. So the center head speeds the measurement of diameters and improves reliability. So in the right side, the center head was considered early in the development of the combination square by Ellie Starrett as the patent drawing shows. In the circles, B would be a more reliable center than A, whereas C is an average for an irregular shaft. And also, the reading a combination square that has blade position 1 and 2. So when a blade has only 2 position by 4 scales, a little judgment improves reliability. So when reading near the center of the scale, Particular care is required. And that's all for my report, which focus more on about the scaled instrument. And moving forward now to the calipers, the original transfer instrument, and to report the part, we have here Miss Maricara Matupoy. Calipers. The original transfer instruments. Simple caliper instruments are the divider, the outside caliper, the inside caliper, and the hermaphrodite caliper. These are all simple calipers. Although the dividers have their own name, they all have ends that are adjustable to transfer a measurement from part to standard, usually a scale. Caliper defined the distance and the measure, wherein from the reference point to the measured point. A circle can be approximated 
with a graduated scale if sufficient measured points are plotted. For example, if the distance is made in a radius bar, an infinite number of measured points can be swung around any reference point. If instead a solid radius bar, the points are adjustable, then a range of radii can be selected. Types of calipers that measure the reference point and the measured point, wherein the dividers measure the line measurement, the outside calipers measure the end measurement, the inside calipers also measure the end measurement, and the hermaphrodite calipers measure the line to end measurement. All caliper instrument transfer measurements, these are all basic types of calipers. Other versions bear little resemblance except in principle of operation. Main types of calipers have been devised. The double calipers and the reversible calipers is for outside and inside measurement, while the combination calipers provide for a large range of inside and outside measurements. On the other hand, extension beam trammels have capacity up to 36 inches. Transfer of measurement with dividers. The reliability is excellent where from the preference point to the measured point. In excellent is from line to line and for the reliability good from female age to line and for the fair is the line to inside male age and for the poor is inside the male age to inside male age. And for the bad, is the inside male age to outside male age. The important thing to remember in the transfer of measurement is that two and not one measurements are involved. Each contributes errors. Errors and for added or subtracted measurements. Example, if a circle is divided into 20 spaces by stepping off, with a divider whose setting is 0.003 inches large, so it must be in the first reliability bond, wherein and it is begun from one point, the error is 1 over 16. And for the fair reliability, it is begun from opposite sides, the error is 1 over 32 and for the reliability of good it begins at four quadrants the error is reduced to 1 over 64 let's all remember that for added or subtracted measurement you should start from the reference point to the measurement point any through measurement is affected by the part, the instrument, and the observer. Advantages of dividers No parallax error Unless a rule can be placed on the edge, its thickness causes unreliability due to parallax. Well, in computational convenience, the shoulder is 31 over 64 inch, from the reference line, no convenient row graduation can be aligned. In the second picture, the dividers are set to duplicate the dimension and then transfer to a skill for AC measurement from 1 inch graduation. In manipulative convenience, as what you can see in the picture, Laying out the same dimension many times requires more time than laying it out once and setting dividers to it so that any number can be laid out with the dividers.
from what is shown in the figure, it is properly used that dividers can save time without decreasing reliability. Calipers have more common with the slingshots than rifles. The path of the bullet is represented by the barrel. The rifle is aimed by making the line coincide with a visual line from the eye to the target, allowing for a trajectory. The accuracy depends on the skill with which the lines coincide, as what you can see in the figure. The line of measurement is the shortest line across the part. The accuracy of measurement results from the skill with which the edge of the rule is aligned. Where in a caliper, like a slingshot, has no built-in reference surfaces to align with the part. Accuracy depends on skill. In a slingshot, there is no physical embodiment of the bullet path. Having no references, skill alone determines accuracy. The difference between most reliable, the least reliable, and the least reliable caliber. In most reliable, from a surface to a similar surface, same peel on both. And least reliable, from a cylindrical surface to a flat surface, such as an inside micrometer, similar new on both. And least reliable, from a cylindrical surface to a roll, no deal with roll to compare with cylinder. Slide caliper, the advantages and disadvantages. So for the advantages, first is it combines roll inside and outside calipers in one instrument. Second is it provides positive contact with reference and measured points. The third one is substitutes line to line for line to edge readings. And the fourth one is has built in memory. And for the disadvantages of slide caliper, first is no wear adjustment. The second one is subject to misalignment. And the third one is limited discrimination. And the fourth one is cannot caliper inside to outside part features. Although slide calipers are handy, careful measurement practices must be applied. The table shown the metrological data for scale instruments. As what you can see in the figure, you should note that although the caliper instrument have relatively good sensitivity, their reliability is low for a skilled operator and very low for manufacturing application because true transfers are required for each measurement. As what is shown in the table, it is all about the reliability checklist for the skilled instruments. There is an inspection of instrument and how you're going to use it and to take care of it. So at what is shown and discussed in the table, that some of these are that suggestions seem self-evident because carelessness can cause an expensive part to be scrapped or a careful experiment to yield incorrect results. And that's all for our report. On behalf of my group mates, Ms. Amelia and Ms. Mariker, we thank you for listening and I hope that you gain knowledge and information about our report which focus more on about the measurement with graduated skills and transfer instrument. Thank you.